All right, guys, I think we are now live. It's Bernard Nomberg. Today is, I think, Monday afternoon. I, the days all kind of run together. <laughs> Nomberg Law Firm, and I've got my friend Nathan Marcus with the Marcus Agency with me. Good afternoon, Nathan. How are you doing, friend? I'm good, Bernard. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and I appreciate you Kate, taking a few minutes today. We had some little glitches the other day, but I think we've got it worked out for right now. But uh, you never know. It's the internet. It does what it wants to do, but yeah. what we're what we're going to talk about for the next little bit with Nathan is about auto and home insurance and how it's it being impacted by COVID nineteen. And before we jump into that, Nathan, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your agency here in in Birmingham. Okay, Bernard, a uh, uh, local guy, grew up here, um, went to high school in Birmingham, went away to college. Uh, trivia question, who was the last member to join the SEC? We're so new at it, people still get the answer wrong. That's so right. uh, I was a University of Missouri grad. Uh, I went to Atlanta after that for a while, and I guess I still am a grad, University of Missouri student. Uh, moved back to Birmingham, I was in the wholesale food business, uh, family business for decades, and uh, had moved on from that, decided to do something different, got to start all over again, whether you want to or not. And, Bought a little Allstate agency in Vestavia on Highway 31, uh, close to the Rainbow Paint Store, and uh, bought another one in Mountain Brook in the Crestline Post Office building. So we've got two locations now, and um, and and things are uh, going well. It is. It's been a, a good opportunity for us. Well, considering what we had in the last 24 hours in the state, uh, I bet you're pretty busy right now. Um, it's been a busy day. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, a lot of the damage was not as nearly as tough in Alabama as it was in some of the other states, but mm -hmm. um, but we still had folks that unfortunately incurred some obstacles. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do at the Marcus Agency, Nathan. This is with the pandemic that's going on, there's so many questions out there about insurance. We wanna make sure that people who are watching this live or watching this later on understand the type of insurance that we're gonna be addressing and why they need to know certain things now. Well, during times like this, you know, I mean, people have to prioritize. So, you know, like you said, we, we focus on um, home and auto coverage and we also do small business. and. I wanted to make sure I mentioned small business because there's, uh, there's a lot of friction in the world right now with small business coverage. Um, when you take out a small policy, you really just assume in good faith that it's going to have the coverages that you need and you don't really read the fine print. And insurance is different because it doesn't say, um, well, we're going to include these things and everything else is excluded. It actually does it backwards. It says, we're gonna exclude these things and everything else is included. So if uh, a wheel falls off a plane flying by and they didn't specifically exclude that, then it's gonna be included. Bacteria and airborne illness, transferable airborne illness, on small business policies from most carriers is specifically stated as an exclusion. And people, needless to say, were exceptionally upset when they found that out. It was the great, the one time I need my coverage and I can't use it. And there's reasons for this. One of probably the worst claim for the industry was during Hurricane Sandy, the one that went up the Eastern seaboard. I think it was 27 billion that the industry paid out if, and there's certainly a lot of different numbers, but if commercial business covered bacteria and airborne illness, they think the claim would be 340 billion or somewhere in there. And that's just for April. Mm -hmm. So you would have gone from 27 billion to 340 billion maybe twice or three times. And obviously it would have bankrupted the whole industry. Mm -hmm. The reason that a pandemic isn't covered by insurance is it's uninsurable. I mean, that's why the government's having a bailout because 
the risk was too severe for insurance to be able to handle. It's why you have to have extra coverage for earthquake in California, why you have extra coverage for floods in Alabama, because regular insurance is not going to cover it. So there's a lot of disappointed people. Um, but in reality, if it had have kicked in, you probably would, you may not have gotten paid because your carrier may have gone bankrupt anyway. So that's why you're seeing that for small businesses. For, for home and auto, some of the risk that you run on auto is um, people say, well, I'm not driving my car. I really don't need insurance for now. I'll just terminate it and pick it back up on the other side of this. And the challenge with that is insurance is based on history. I mean, it's based on your credit, your driving record, your address, and your history of coverage. And if you terminate your policy for longer than a week, your history is gone. So now you're starting all over again. Now the general comes into play because a lot of carriers won't pick you up because they assume you're high risk. That's why you didn't have coverage. So the worst thing you can do is to terminate your coverage. Now you can make changes. You can no longer physically cover your car. There, there's types of policies you can get where it's basically my car's on the sideline. One of the coverage last night sure proved it is you would want um, collision coverage. That's where something hits you. Mm -hmm. So that where your car is parked, you don't need liability. You don't need worrying about getting sued because you don't drive it anywhere, but it's sitting in your parking lot and last night a tree fell off. You would be covered. It's not very expensive at all. That way insurance is still in play. It still happens, but the rates have fallen substantially. So for those people who are really backed up on, um, on finances right now, uh, calling up your carrier and getting them to shift the rates to where you just have a car parked as opposed to uninsured is a, is a strong option. Is that if you do that, if, if you get rid of certain parts of your coverage, but keep your policy in place and just keep liability, should you keep medical and underinsured, uninsured? and No, you can get, if you're going to leave your car parked, you can get rid of all that stuff. Just insure your car in case something hits it parked in your driveway. And you know. that, Nathan, does that keep a continuity of your policy so you don't lose your history? Correct. Well? That stays in place. Now, here's the kicker. So what's the catch? Well, you better call your carrier or go online or do something. Make sure you put it back into place when you start driving. Because now That's you've got right. all the legal exposure, but no insurance to reflect that. Well, guys, I'm, I'm talking currently with Nathan Marcus, the Marcus Agency here in Birmingham. I want to welcome Daniel O'Dresen. Hey, Daniel, good to see you, bud. My old double play partner from high school, Mike Rooker, and one of my college teammates, Doug Bradley. So thank you guys from different parts of the country joining us. We're talking about the impact of COVID-19 with auto, home, and small business insurance. I want to welcome Jay Bender, local attorney and friend. Um, Nathan, let's stay on the track talking about auto insurance right now. Are there any other considerations for people who are driving to and from work and, and have somewhat of a regular driving schedule? Are there certain things they should be thinking about by way of any changes in their policies? Well, you know, the one that's been most obvious, most recent, Allstate, because we're an Allstate agency, admittedly, all, this is something Allstate started, was the return program, fan, financial return. And why did they, and then, um, uh, to the end of the, to the uh, credit of the industry, most carriers followed suit. Why didn't they change rates? Why did they do it the way they did it? Insurance is a state mandated product. It's not federal. So, and if you're going to move rates, you've got to go to the insurance commission to get approval. You can't just jack your rates up because the insurance commission wants to know why. And I want to make more money isn't a good enough reason. You've got to substantiate that claims went up or whatever. So the industry was fearful about dropping rates because no one knows how long this is going to last. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they gave a return rebate, however you want to work it. Um, just about every carry in the state is online with it now. 
Uh, it's, it's, it's booked for April and May. Um, and the reason they did it is because people aren't driving right now. Mm -hmm. And since they're not driving, they're not running into each other. And the industry, the carriers were having windfalls, the unexpected windfalls. So if you haven't heard from your carrier, regardless of the brand, mm -hmm. assume that, that there's a return for you for your April and May premium. And almost all of them are setting it up where you don't ask for it. If there's any type of auto pay, then it'll show up on your auto pay that you have in place. And I would assume that not just your, not just all state, but most major brands would have, you would have an online access to your file or your account. So yeah, that's a good point, Bernard. Excuse me. Where so the, the the question is, where do I go first with this? Again, I'm pretty confident that all carriers are doing it this way. Check the mobile app. And when you pull up the mobile app, it's the first thing on there. That I know it's that way with Allstate, and I can't believe anybody would do it any differently because right. mobile apps are pretty prevalent. Any other considerations while we're still talking about auto coverages, auto insurance, Nathan, that have popped up in the last couple of days that the average consumer should be aware of? And we're talking not from a business consumer standpoint, but from homeowners, not homeowners, but individuals who have. Okay, policies. so everybody's lifestyle has shifted. You know, older folks aren't getting out. Younger people are doing more um, favors for older people. Maybe you've got a neighbor and you're going to make a run to the grocery store and you're just going to borrow their car because your car's out of gas for whatever reason. And, and that's fine. Just make sure you have a verbal agreement. And that'd be written. Hey, Bernard, sorry if I use your car. Sure. Because insurance follows the car. So if I'm in your car, Bernard, you're insuring me. So unless... I used your car in an unauthorized manner. So at times like this, where people's lifestyles are, have shifted so dramatically, just know that if you're gonna let somebody use your car because you're not using it, you are insuring them. Their insurance is not primary yours is. Good, good point to know. Thank you, Nathan. And I put the link to your agency's website in our show notes here. Thank you. How, how can people get in touch with you if they have insurance questions after this show? Well, I appreciate that. So I'm Nathan Marcus at allstate.com. Uh, our telephone number is 205-824-8001. Uh, we're the Marcus Allstate, the Marcus Agency. So if you went allstate.com forward slash the Marcus Agency, you'd find us. Also through Facebook, you can find them the same way, just the Marcus yeah, Agency. Marcus Agency, yeah. Okay. Well, let's kind of shift off, Nathan, from auto coverages to homeowners. Are there any considerations, any things now that we're in the, this pandemic that homeowners need to be concerned about? Well, the one thing that you that we're seeing a ton of right now on homeowners is refinancing because the rates got so good that there's almost been a pandemic with the mortgage companies. They're getting buried. And there's two reasons why people refinance. They do it either to pull equity out of their house or get their payment down. Pretty much they want their payment down either way. And our suggestion is, as long as you want your payment down, why not verify your insurance cover? So, because you may, it, you may be surprised how much savings can be there. Um, that's not directly related to the pandemic, but we're definitely seeing people taking some of their additional downtime and consolidating their records so they can refinance. Rates are good right now. And, and, and you're seeing people take advantage of that. Um, uh, if you want to look up things and consider changing, refinancing, et cetera. Is there an online tool or do you need to, do consumers need to call and speak to a person about these things? I think if you went to bikerate.com, you could probably find out what rates are today. And then from there, be able to see if it's, if it's worth your time or not. Um, I will tell you just, even though it's a change of subject that, um, that the more they're starting to get more um, specific it's, it's, it's uh, JP Morgan Chase said, 
you had to have a 700 or better and 20% down, you're buying a home, which is kind of like a panic, but that's how un, that's how much chaos is in this industry right now, the mortgage industry, because of all the refis. So again, if you're looking to refi, it to me, it, it may not hurt just to verify that the rates on your home are valid. Um, other things you see from um, the COVID outbreak is people trying to find ways to, to get their overhead down. And, you know, what's interesting is when you get home insurance coverage, um, we may cover you for, you may have paid 800,000 for your house and we want to insure it for 400,000. And you say, how can you do that when I just paid eight? Because we don't insure the dirt. We don't care where your house is. We care how close you are to a fire hydrant, we being the industry, how close you are to a fire hydrant and how close you are to a fire station. But, you know, how much, we want to know what it costs to rebuild your home. And so you'll see some people that'll have downtime and they'll start auditing their own policy and they'll say, wait a minute, I'm insured at 400,000, my house is worth 300,000. So you got to shrink the coverage. Yeah, you just can't do that. So um, I live on, on a corner of two streets and there's a fire hydrant right there on the corner. Is that a good thing? That would be a good thing. That would definitely, <laughs> matter of fact, we'd love to quote you, make sure your rates are where they need to be. <laughs> Well, thank you. I may be getting in touch with you again after we're done, but I, I want to welcome Arthur Price, Steve Guze, Erwin Fingerman, Jim Morton, and several others. So thank you guys for spending some time with Nathan Marcus, the Marcus Agency. We're talking about auto coverage, homeowners coverage, small business coverage in the wake of, of this pandemic. And before we leave the homeowners uh, part of this, Nathan, are there any types of claims that you can think of or have seen yet that may be part of this. I'm just grasping here, but yeah, I really you know don't what know. you see. Well, you know what you see, and what people don't realize is, and this goes for renters as well as homeowners. Your family liability coverage is included in your homeowners and your renters. So, what does that mean? You're playing that long par five at Highland Golf Course, the one that runs down Claremont. And um, on your first drive, on your, on, you get to hit third and you duck hook the stew out of the ball and it bounces off a car and, it, and the car fr driver freaks out and hits telephone pole, mm -hmm. pole falls. All right, now what? Your homeowner's policy covers the exposure of you hitting a bad drive off of a golf course. Go figure, believe it or not. That falls on your homeowners, even your renters. It's your family liability coverage. Policies are usually standard with 100,000. We usually write them with 300,000 because it's not that much more at all. And mm -hmm. Bernard, this may be surprised to you, but people do sue in our society. Um, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, go figure. So, uh, so what we're seeing is obviously people are at home a lot more. They've got their dog outside a lot more with them. Um, that's one of those family liability exposures. Uh, so where the dog runs out, Mm -hmm. and bites the neighbor that didn't the dog never knew because at least in our neighborhood there's a lot more people out walking because they they're stir crazy mm -hmm. nathan i i was I, i've lived in our neighborhood since 94 and during this time of the year i just know i watch when they get on that 12th hole when they're about to tee off i either slow down or i speed up because i, I can hit buy one of those golf balls before and had to have my windshield replaced. I didn't hit anything, thankfully. I slowed yeah. down, stopped, and assessed. I took care of it. But yes, I've been hit by that ball before. <laughs> and if that guy that had hit the ball knew he had hit an attorney, can That's you right. imagine That's how right. he would have responded? <laughs> <laughs> well, Nathan, you had touched on small business insurance earlier. Let's get back to that for just a minute. Because I think that that may be, at least from an outsider's perspective, that may be one of the big topics right now about how are small businesses handling their insurance coverages and what type of coverages are there available for small business owners. So I kind of want to throw it to you to kind of lead us through a little bit of this. Well, and that's a good question because it's called a business owner's policy. And what's interesting about business insurance is it's like dropping an octagon blanket on a rectangle. You know, the policies are built one way. 
and then it's supposed to cover. I mean, think about how different it would be cutting a hair, covering a hair salon versus a vet. You know, but policies are written to try to take all of that into consideration. So in doing so, it's easy to understand how stuff can gap. Now they've tried to make it where it's a little bit more specialized. We're in, we're like what, what Allstate does. Allstate really tries to stay in what they call a vertical, like maybe funeral homes or CPAs or real estate agents or attorney offices. Um, but still you run the risk of there being some gaps when it comes to this virus, there's not really a gap. It's very specific. Um, there's, they're called exclusions. And I'm looking at this one right here in front of me and you know, exclusion J says virus or bacteria, any virus, bacterium or other microorganism that induces or is incapable of inducing physical distress, illness, or disease is not included. Now they do say, however, the exclusion does not apply to fungus. So um, policies get that specific. So as disappointing as it is where all of a sudden you need it and it's not there, again, if it were there, the cost of coverage would be phenomenal because the risk would be so dramatic. What what type of coverages have you seen for small businesses that could or that wouldn't be excluded that there could well be you'll you'll see some specialty coverages and there's one that they're talking about now that covered this they didn't sell one policy hmm. yeah I mean that's just it they didn't they didn't sell one policy you know um, it's like what's going on with earthquakes in California. You know, that's that last earthquake was in the 1989, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, North Virginia World Series. And the government said, we are not, this industry is not going to cover what happens on an earthquake. It's a separate policy. Easy for us to understand around here. It's called flood. Mm -hmm. It's been so long, Bernard, people don't remember anymore. So you know what they do then? Out of sight, out of mind. They don't have it. They, they've dropped the coverages. They don't have it. So, um, you know, it, it's easy for me to say what someone else should prioritize. Obviously, they'll do that themselves, but it's, it's, it, this is why the government has stepped in to help people because the cost of these coverages. See, what people forget, Bernard, is insurance runs in a pool. So let's say you have your car insurance with Allstate. Well, Allstate tries to do the very best it can to um, regiment that pool. They want to make sure that they're bringing in healthy drivers. They want to make sure that everybody in the family is on that policy and they, they check. And the reason is, is because if I'm in that pool and you're in that pool and I'm driving like an idiot and all of a sudden I have a half a dozen claims that affects what you may pay. Absolutely. That's what that's. So you want to pick a carrier that has healthy pools, you know, that has, that they have, they don't let just anybody in. That's what keeps rates in line. Well, guys, before we, we conclude talking with Nathan Marcus with the Marcus Agency, one more time, Nathan, how can folks reach out to you? Thanks, Bernard. Yeah, we are at 205-824-8001. Uh, uh, Nathan Marcus, the, the Marcus Agency, excuse me, Nathan Marcus at allstate.com. Uh, we're located on Highway 31 behind the crest, behind the Vestavia Bowling Alley, recently moved, and in the Crestline Post Office. Now, if you come by right now, you may not find us, but That's we're right. on the phones. We may just be working from home. That's right. Well, guys, before we conclude with Nathan, and, and Nathan, I really appreciate your, your expertise and kind of guiding us a little bit through these types of insurances here. Y'all have questions or concerns now, please put them in the comment section. Or if you watch this on replay, you're always welcome to reach out to Nathan or, or to me and I'll get the questions or concerns over to Nathan. Uh, Nathan, I'm gonna leave you with the last word if that's okay. If you wanna give any information in general to people who are concerned about their insurances or what's going on right now, how their insurance is impacted uh, maybe something we haven't touched on. If there's anything else, we've gone over auto, we've gone over homeowners, we've gone over small business. Uh, is there anything else of some words of wisdom to share? Yeah, with call them? your carrier. 
check in with your carrier because there is a lot going on, especially after last night's storms. Um, there is a lot going on. They're going to be updated on what your uh, returns look like, the percentage of returns. Certainly, you know, we know all about Allstate, we, and I know the other guys are participating, but, you know, check in with them and they'll let you know where you're at. Very good. Well, guys, you heard it from, from one of the experts in the industry, Nathan Marcus. Nathan, thank you for your time, your wisdom, your expertise, and your experience today. Bernard, it's an honor to be on your program. I appreciate thinking of us. Absolutely. And guys, we're going to try a couple of times a week, bring you different people in their areas of industry about how this pandemic is uh, impacting what they do that'll translate to what the consumers and folks like us need to know. So thank you and y'all have a good rest of your week, week and be safe.